Hello! Today I've been given another thermal imager for testing and this one is a standalone handheld unit and it is a Kai Wheats, K Wheats and it is the uh, KTI W01 and you can see there is the resolution of 256 by 192 and its temperature range is from minus 20 to plus 550 but not all at the same time. Now it is a solid plastic body. It doesn't feel too bad. I think it'll. This outer black edge is like a plasticky kind of squadgy rubber, as in it's not a hard. The red stuff's a bit of a hard plastic. The black stuff will probably survive a bump or two. Uh, there's no visible screw holes, so. Taking that apart would be a challenge. I imagine it's going to be poppy plastic, but we're not going to do that today because we need it to work. Uh, although under this front handle, if you push it up and out, is a 18650 rechargeable battery. It's replaceable, which is nice. Under the front, under the flap, is the thermal imager itself and the visible light camera. Right, let us turn it on. Turn it on. Uh, press and hold the power button, and it boots up. Do, 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 do. Wait, did I open the flap? No, I need to open the flap so that it works. No, I mean, the start time's probably about the same as any of the other phone based cameras you see. And there you go. It is working. Now, here's where it gets bad. Not bad. Bad isn't the word I want. Not just as user friendly as I would like. Uh, the up and down buttons just seem to make the minimum and maximum temperature turn on, on and off down the bottom there. That's about it. Left and right, on the other hand, cycles through the visible light modes. So that's temperature, temp, display temperature, but just using the visible light camera. And then if you go through them, it goes for a little bit of mix between infrared and visible, a little bit more infrared. A little bit more infrared again, and then pure infrared and no visible light whatsoever. And some of these are just reflections of things and not actual heat. There's my hand. There's my hand. There's the hot bit of my hand. Let me go back and... So you can see there, it gets out of funky focus, but there's a, there's a setting for that. There's visible light again. Right, so if we go back to... That one's probably a pretty good... Thing. Now, in the menu, this is where all the excitement happens. So, menu, and then up and down, the image correction, that's for how far away your thing is, your, you know, your, if you're going to do distance. It does reset, honest, it does correct the, if you could be watched, you're generally not going to be that close to things, that's too far the other way, there you go, you can see it line up, there we go, lines up there. If you're going to be, obviously now if you go too far away, it's too far away. But yes, that's what that does. And then you can set it. But, uh, all right, menu again. And then, well, obviously, should be fairly explanatory. Photos and videos would take you into the gallery so you can view uh, videos that you've seen or taken or mine are in there, we don't need to see them. Let's go back. Color palette is, okay, here's an annoying thing on the menu. Uh, so you would think that the right button would take you over to the right. It doesn't. You have to press enter to select the next bit of the color palette. No, there's many to choose from. There's just the cool, the spectrum, and the black and white, and the standard iron. Pressing enter would select it. Go back. Emissivity is, as you've guessed, is choosing your uh, surface, whether it's a standard 0.95 of a matte, semi-matte, semi-glossy, glossy, or your own, whatever you want to put in there. And in the settings settings, there's just things like auto shutdown for how long mine, I've set mine to never turn off. It's just going to do its thing. Brightness, language, temperature, temperature range. So while on the side it says minus 20 to plus 500, it does have ranges. So the lows from minus 20 to 120 and then from 120 to 550. So it can't do the full temperature range in one go. You have to select between the two settings and it doesn't automatically switch like some of the other uh, 
uh, infrared cameras. Uh, that's just the spot temperature in the middle, turn it on and off. And the version just shows you which version of firmware we're on. I haven't seen any firmware updates yet, I haven't been given any. But yeah, that's, that's about it, it's doing its thing. Now, the other button is the trigger button. Now, if you press it once, it will take a picture. No, someone's at the doorbell. Someone's at the driveway doorbell. Well, better go and see who that is. One Temu package, package later. I missed it when they were all orange. I like the orange, it's funnily enough, it matched me. Anyway, where was I? Yes, the button. That's for taking the pictures. Ah, store photo, no. I wish there was an option where you could turn off the question, like if I wanted to take a series of pictures, I would like to go bang, bang. Oh wait, that does work. Sweet. I didn't know pressing the trigger button made it take a picture and store it. Yes. Excellent. That's going to save a lot of uh, messing about. Let's rough touch the bag. That's handy. We're not going to be full of photos. Smashing. Right. Uh, back to this button again. If you press and hold, it starts a video. Pressing, holding, start recording. Yes. That's better. Then record a video. I'm not sure what the uh, frame rate of said video is, but I can, at least I can adjust all these things on the fly. Nice. I like that. Oh, I've just noticed though. Wait, can you see on... I'm going to put it on screen and on the camera, but the hot temperature... Wait, oh, come over here. I'll put it on screen and can you see the red one that's flicking about? Well, if you put it on something red, you can't read it. That needs a black outline or something or a shadow or look, you can't even see that. You'd have to go through the and take it right down before you can see the that's annoying. Especially when it's the hot bit they want to see, not the cool bit. Yeah. Okay, right. And then I should be able just to click the button to stop the video. No? Long press to stop. Long press to stop. Okay, so that stops the video. But yeah, um, I can hear a bee. Oh, I saw my first bumblebee the other day. That means it must be the nice weather time. Hey, uh, what did the spec? I haven't got the spec things with me, but I'm sure it's got a 32 gigabyte memory inside, and it's got USB C connectivity for charging and downloading the pictures. When you plug it into your computer, stored inside it on its memory card, there's also a program for editing and reviewing your thermal images and videos so you can edit them, upload them and take out detail and things from them. Now, for me, one of the problems that this has, it is has, or rather its lack of, is any sort of tripod mount. There is no uh, quarter 20 thread like in the base or anywhere, so I can't mount this in a tripod, which is uh, going to be, well, I won't be using it for that purpose because I need to be filming on this camera and have the thermal imager somewhere else doing the filming so we can do the same thing at the same time and then I can overlay the images for you. It's fine. If this, if you were going to be using this purely for handheld work, for taking pictures and for recording video, just in a handheld situation, apps absolutely fine. But for me, or for for us, uh, we need this mounted somewhere. And I mean, nah. I mean, you could mock up something with a jubilee clip and a thing, but it's not a camera tripod mount would be ideal. Just in the bottom, that'd be nice. Something like that. But, I don't know, it comes in a little protective case, much like your standard jump starter boxy cases. But, I mean, it's nice solid plastic, it would be quite happy rattling about in your toolbox or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it, it does the thing, it does the thermal imaginess. Let's, let's get something hot, shall we? Let's make a hot thing and then I'll show you the temperature ranging this of it. Meh, there's no point turn it off. Right, let's get something steel, a bit of steel, how about that? See, well, this is going to be a problem. I would like to heat that steel up and film it at the same time. I um, should also probably adjust the image position. Menu, image correction, and then we'll just, which way are we going? The other way. That way a little bit. No, oh, that's made it a lot worse. Something like that. That's about the distance that we want. 
Right, uh, if I got a blowtorch in here, let's just use a little, a little blowtorch. Right, I'll blowtorch, and then we'll start a video. Start recording. Still recording. See that right, so hope that's what I was hoping to see. See where it says they are over. That means that flame and the hot bit is now above the range that we can set so we can see in this setting. So if I go into menu. Oh you can't change while you're recording a video. Ah that's going that's disappointing. So I now have to stop this video. End recording. No, no, say no to that one. No to a photo. And then go into menu. And go to settings, press enter, temperature range, temperature range, enter, change it to high, enter, go back. Now we can see the temperature of the hot bit and then start a video again. Now, where it says over, what it means is under. So there's no temperature there, which is under the range that it can see. because this is plus 120 to plus 550. So anything less than 120 shows is over, what it means is under. It's a shame we can't switch it on the fly. That would have been nice. But these are just small problems. Now let's finish that video, end recording, smash it. No, and don't store the photo either. No, no. But yeah, so apart from having to manually adjust the temperature range every time if you want to go low or high, uh, I feel like that should be a shortcut somewhere. That could have been the up and down buttons as well. You could have press, press and hold up to change like the temperature range. I'm just guessing now, see if that works. No, it doesn't. Press and hold down to change the temperature range. I'm just messing now. Well, that was the Kai Wheats uh, KTI W01 handheld thermal imager. It totally does the thing. It uh, does videos and pictures of thermal objects. Powering off. Four, three, two, one. It's got a nice box to live in. It's pretty durable from the few times that I've dropped it. Granted, it's not going to replace the, any of the phones that I've got because they're useful for what they are because they can upload from themselves but in a purely handheld situation where you just need one of these to go about and check things yes it absolutely does the thing at a fraction of the price of any of the FLIR stuff and in our video I'll try and do some sort of side-by-side -side comparison of this taken video versus one of the phones taken video as well and we'll do that but that'll do us for today so any comments questions anything like that leave them down below and i'll try my best to answer them and as always thanks for watching